So here's the Canon XA20 video camera that's a standard tool in TV broadcasting. We use these cameras on our broadcasting courses at UCFB Wembley because they replicate what's actually used in the industry today. So here's our guide to using the XA20. It may look like a complicated camera with lots of settings, but rest assured it's relatively easy to use and this is the information you need to know. To switch the camera on, move the setting left from off to camera and the green on light will appear. Always make sure the camera is in manual mode for the best results. Switch to the M mode. You'll get a chance to experiment with the settings yourself, but on the top of the camera is the zoom rocker switch, giving you control over how close you want to be to the subject you're filming. And this is the dial you use to focus. It's located just behind the lens hood. The next thing to show you is the input connection for the headphones, which are essential wear throughout your filming. Plug your headphones into this socket, which is also just behind the lens hood on the right hand side. The Canon XA20 camera has touchscreen options you'll see when you open the screen on the left hand side. You use this screen to monitor everything that you're filming. Everything is done by touch. When open, you can see how easy it is to adjust, intuitive and user friendly. So let's break down the whole touchscreen process and you use the function key as your way into the menu. That menu comes up on the screen. Press record programs and exposure appears. Make sure you're on M for manual exposure. Now look on the left hand side of the screen and you see three options. F stops, which is the amount of light you allow to come into the camera. This lightens or darkens the subject image. The next option down is shutter speed. As a default, we recommend you keep this to 1 over 50. And finally on this screen you have the digital gain, which again can brighten the image if you're filming in extreme conditions. We suggest a maximum of 6 dBs. On that manual exposure screen on the right hand side is a zebra-like rectangle with 70 on it. This so-called zebra will help you to identify perfect exposure. You can see that function in practice here. Effectively, less lines on the screen represents better exposure. If you don't want your filming subjects to appear pinkish or bluey, you'll need to do a white balance. This is something you must do before every filming session to make sure the colors on your video are true. Here's the process for doing a white balance. First of all, find a white sheet of print paper. If you haven't got a white sheet of paper handy, you could focus on a white shirt or a white hat just as easily to do your white balance. Here's the process. Back to your touch screen, press function and then white balance. You'll see this new screen headlined color temperature. The icon you need on this menu is bottom left with the number one. All you do is select and then press set WB and the camera will do the white balance automatically as it focuses on the white sheet. This makes sure that the whites are purely white and the other colors will also be true. We've already shown you the focus dial on the outside of the camera and this is the kind of thing that you'll see on your screen. It's quite easy to see when the subject you're focusing on is pin sharp. If you're filming people, the best place to focus on is one of their eyes. Get that in perfect focus and everything between the camera and the subject will be in perfect focus as well. To help to ensure perfect focus, you can click on the peak icon and a red outline appears around your subject. This means your focusing is spot on. If you're filming action shots or street scenes, you need to record this with your focus dial to infinity. The infinity icon looks like a figure eight on its side. This is the exact opposite to what you did with the eye in close up. Now everything you're filming 
is at distance. Now we must attend to the audio on the camera. This is just as important as the video by the way. Next to the main camera handle on the left hand side are all the controls you need for the audio. The top left hand setting needs to be switched to the right under that plus 48V. This is commonly known within the industry as phantom power. The CH1 setting in the centre needs to be pushed right to M for manual. And the next dial along should be set just below halfway. Wearing your headphones you can adjust the dial accordingly but this is a very good starting point. Before we finish we come to the most important part, actually recording with the camera. To start and stop a recording, simply press the red record button at the back of the camera. And there you go, you're ready to start filming.